All right, today I've got a Honda Accord with a bad blower motor. Let's get it fixed. Now, I already diagnosed this vehicle and I know it needs a new blower motor. It definitely has a bad blower motor. Let's see if it's working right now. Yeah, it is. It's working each time. Figures, of course, as soon as I put a video on, it's gonna be working. Um, I banged it and got it to work again, so that's why it's working right now. But we'll get a new blower motor in there and get this thing fixed for good. Now it's ridiculously hot out today, so unfortunately I gotta run the cooler so I can at least keep it to around 90. All right, many vehicles, Hondas included, have the blower motor up under the uh, dash on the passenger side, usually behind the glove compartment here, or past the glove compartment. Sometimes you can get to it right away, but in this case you can see there's a cover on it. Now most of the time we can just reach up in here and snap it off from the front. You can see it's got these little tabs right here, and then we pull it. And it's got two prongs in the back, and then usually two or three tabs. This one has three. Then we can take this cover off. And like I said, not every model has a cover. Some of them don't. All right, now that we got the cover out of the way, you can see there's our blower motor, and there's our connector right there. And we will just press in the tab. There's a tab right there. We can press it in and see if we can't unplug it kind of tight. There's our plug right there. Now, while I'm here, I'll show you real quick how you should test it. I don't recommend just blindly replacing parts without at least testing it. So I'll show you one quick test you can do just to verify whether it's a bad blower motor or if it's something else. And while we're right here, if we follow over, you can see this wire right here goes to our blower motor transistor, which lives right back there and it's got two screws and a plug. I'm also going to be replacing that too. These blower motors um, work very closely together with the transistor on these newer vehicles and so generally if I have a bad blower motor I replace the transistor too and that's what I'm going to do on this vehicle. Okay, now that we have it unplugged I'll show you a quick test you can do. I'm just going to take a regular test light and we're going to test it and make sure we have power and ground right here. Obviously um, one of these wires, if you look there's two wires. One is power, one's ground. and what I'm going to do is just touch each one of these leads. I'll touch one to one side. Right in there, I'm going to touch one to one side of the terminal and one to the other. And I'm only going to touch them. I'm not going to jab them in there because otherwise we spread these terminals out. And then when we plug it in, we have another problem. So we don't want to jam our tools in there. But I already have the key on because the blower motor is not going to run without the key on. And I have it all the way on high. So if this thing has power and it's working properly, this test light should light up as soon as I touch each side. So I'll just hold this right there like that. And then we'll just touch the other side. And you can see we're lit up. And then we can even test our controls by holding it there. And I'll just turn the dial down all the way off. Now there's one, two, and then all the way up to like nine or 11, whatever it is that this one has. You can see now it's off. You can see we're working no problem. Now we know, we've confirmed, we got a bad blower motor, we need to replace it. All right, I'll put a little light down here. All right, now in order to get this out, we're going to need a T25 bit. And there's three screws that hold this in, typical on most Hondas. Uh, what do we got? We got one right here. We got one back over here and one over here somewhere. Can't, I can't quite see them, but I can feel it. Let's see if we can't. Let's see, where are you at? Hard to film in here. We'll get this one out first. All right, there's the first one you can see. That's all it looks like, like that. Just your standard run of the mill T25. Um, the one in the back, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna use the short little Weeha driver. And we'll get this one back here. There you go. Once we get the third screw out, we can just drop the whole blower motor out. And there we go. Alright, while I was right here. I just disconnected this. Just reach up there, press down on the tab, pull it out. These can be in there kind of tight. Just make sure they're, it's not burnt. Same thing with the other connector. We want to look and make sure all the 
wiring looks good nothing looks burnt or out of place because otherwise that can indicate another problem that we're gonna have to fix but anyway we'll pop this out oh, where you at we'll pop this out we got one just regular Phillips type screw right there and one if I can get a shot one right there so I'm just gonna pop them out and take this thing out now I want to warn you this thing is in the way when you put a regular screwdriver in there and try to get an angle this gets in the way and if you try to put a really long one out here, you don't have the good angle. So typically, I'll use my short little screwdriver like this and take it out. It's in there kind of tight if it hasn't been taken out in a while. Pain in the butt. Why they did that, I don't know. But you got to take it out like that. Now the other one's pretty straightforward. You can just get a screwdriver straight in there. And this one, if you do have a long screwdriver like this, Definitely makes it nice. You can just go straight in, take it in and out easy. Now when we pull it out, just be sure to note which way it goes. You can see it's kind of keyed flat on this side. It's got a, whoops, my flashlight would cooperate. It's got a point over there with the plug being on top. So that's how it's going to have to go back in. Oh, and I should warn you, if you've been running the blower motor or doing testing or whatever, this thing is going to be extremely hot. Now, I wasn't running it for very long, so it's not hot at all, but this thing is a heat sink. It's designed to, you know, dissipate heat. The heat that it's creating through resistance, that's why we have blower motor speeds. Instead of diverting the power to the motor, we're sending it over to here, and we're bleeding it off in the form of heat. So that's how these things work. And then this uses an electronic transistor instead of an old school resistor, but it's doing the same thing. It's adding resistance to the line and creating heat. Um, heat is energy. And so it's dissipating the energy through here instead of through our blower motor. And that's how we reduce the speeds. But just be careful with those. Don't burn yourself. All right, here's our old blower motor. Here's our old transistor. We'll set those over there. Here's the new transistor. There's the part number for this. Now this is a sedan, so this is the part number for the sedan. The, uh, um, the coupe is gonna have a different model number, so you gotta make sure to use the correct one because they're wired differently. I don't know why Honda decided to do that, but a lot of models, it's wired differently, so we gotta make sure we're using the right part. I'll show you some aftermarket um, alternatives too that I use sometimes. I'm putting genuine OEM Honda parts in there today. But I understand as these vehicles get over, get older, you might want to save some money. Um, so we'll do that now while I got it right here. I'm also going to put a cabin filter in. I'm using an aftermarket cabin filter. There's the part number right there, 8000003 3 Papa. A lot of zeros. This is typically what a, an OEM Honda one looks like. This is not for this. This is for another vehicle. I think this is a 2017 Civic or something like that. But we'll be doing that, and I typically will do that also. If I'm gonna go in there and replace the blower motor and everything, I'm gonna do this too. I just replace all three so I know we're um, hitting in the right direction. And then here's our OEM uh, blower motor. There's the part number right there. And obviously this is for this application. You always wanna double check for your application. All right, typically I like to get my aftermarket parts from Rock Auto. They're not a sponsor or anything. I just, this is who I use. Um, so we'll see, we're looking at blower motor right here. Typically, I like to use TYC blower motors. That's, uh, that's what I go with if I'm gonna use an aftermarket um, blower motor or fan. Like if it was an air conditioning or radiator fan, I use TYC or blower motors. So you can see there's your part numbers and you can see they're different for a coupe and for a sedan. So that's what I was saying. Make sure you get the right one. And then if we go to our um, they call it a blower motor control module or resistor. Actually, Honda calls it a blower um, transistor, blower motor transistor. Um, I usually go with uh, WVE. That's what I'm going to recommend. You can see it's got the heart there. This one's for the sedan. And then if, hopefully they have one for a coupe. Yeah, right there. Um, that's what I would go with. I, I typically stay away from, uh, you know, stuff like that one right there. Avoid that one, especially on a control module. Um, and then when we're looking at the cabin air filters, you can see there's our TYC. There's the one I just showed you right there. All right, that's what I use. And then also I use Denso. Um, so any, I, and, and that goes for any part on Denso. If you could find a blower motor made by Denso, because that's who makes these, 
Uh, I don't have it on there. Well, you can see right there, Denso makes this, and they, they make the blower motors too. Um, if you can find a Denso, go with Denso. There's nothing wrong with that. But I like TYC. Um, and uh, where's the other one? Uh, WVE. So TYC, WVE, that's what I re recommend if I'm going with aftermarket. Now, while I have it out in my hand, I'm just going to go ahead and install this real quick. I'm going to install it, obviously, in the correct orientation like that. Typically, I'll take these, I'll plug it in first, like that, make sure it's all secure. Then I'll set it up into place. Some models, they have a little bracket over the top to protect it. This one doesn't have it. And then we're just going to set it in there. And the reason it's in the location right there, if you didn't know, this is the airflow. And it's that airflow is going right across the resistor, or those that heat sink, I should say. And it's cooling it down. It's dissipating the heat. Um, there's also, uh, where is it? There's also a little diverter on the blower motor that does the same thing. It takes a little bit of the air and puts, puts it over to the motor to keep it cool. Okay, there you can see both screws are back in, plugged in. We're good and snug. Just snug these up. Um, we don't need to kill them. They're just going into plastic. Uh, and have fun with that screw. It's, it's uh, nice in there. All right, there's our new blower motor. Of course, anytime you replace parts, just make sure it's the same. You can see it is. That's what I was saying, right there, a little bit of the airflow goes back in to cool the motor when this thing's running. So, let's get this thing installed. And while I'm thinking of it, I just took this little cover off. If you need to test, you can clearly see that on the plug, when you're looking at it this way, this side is going to be positive, this one's going to be negative, in order to get it to go in the correct rotation, like this. If you put them backwards, it'll just spin the other way. It wouldn't be the end of the world, but if you want to test it properly, we should put positive to and negative to the correct sides. And looking at this blower motor, I don't see where it says Denso anywhere on there, so I'm not positive if this one's made by Denso. This is another OEM blower motor out of another Honda Accord, different year. Um, but you can clearly see it. This one is made by Denso. So I do know Denso makes a lot of uh, a lot of the OEM parts for Honda. Oh, and while I'm thinking of it, this cover comes with the OEM blower motor, as you can see. If yours comes like this and it doesn't have this little cover on here, um, you should be able to pop the two screws off and put it on the new one, provided that the aftermarket one has the two holes there. If not, I guess you'll have to run it like this. But it's definitely better to have the foam cover that kind of uh, stops the sound. All right, to install it, we're just gonna put it up into place. And we just need to make sure this mates up over there, just like that. And then we should be able to take our screw, put it into place, and get it going. And we'll plug our motor back in. And we'll reinstall our cover. We'll just make sure our two prongs back here go into the appropriate holes. We just line them up back there. And then we snap the front into place and we should be good to go. And we wipe off any sweat prints we might have left on there. All right, now we'll get the cabin air filter. We can just open that up. You can see it's kind of, it's like a strut type effect right there. We just need to push that down and that'll disconnect it. Now we just got to squeeze this and squeeze this and drop it down. I can't do it and hold the camera. Let me set you down. All right, now we just squeeze the sides in just a little bit. That's all we got to do. Just bring it past these little knobs right there and just drop this down. And then we just reach in here now let me show you. All right, now when we go in here and look, we got a tab right here. We just need to press in, and we got a tab over here. It's just like the glove compartment. You got to do them both at the same time, or they just kind of snap back in. Oh, I was able to get it. We just pull it straight out, and there's our cabin air filter. Eh, I don't know if you can see the... There's quite a bit of crap in there, so it'll be okay changing this thing out. Just make note of how the airflow goes goes like that, down towards the blower motor. 
Alright, now for this cabin air filter, you can just take it, lift it straight out. And if this thing was installed correctly, you can see the airflow is going our, down the same direction that, that it showed on here. So we can just set that aside. We can get our new one. And we'll get it put in. All right, and you can see for these, our air flows the same. It's gonna go down like this. Now we wanna make sure we get this last pleat over this edge right here. And the same thing on the front edge. You can see there's a little um, edge right there. And we want that pleat to go over it. That way the airflow goes through and not around. A lot of times if you just drop it in, it'll naturally go where it's supposed to, but sometimes you have to manipulate it. And if we did it correctly, you can uh, hopefully you can see it did line up perfectly. So now we can get get it installed. All right, now we can just take it. Obviously, we make sure we're in the same orientation. And we can just slide it straight in until it clicks. And you should hear it click in on both sides. And then we can bring this up, snap it into place. Now it's locked. And then we just put our little strut back on there make sure it works good all right now let's verify everything works now I should mention when I was doing the install of everything I had the key out with it off the only time I had it on was to test it so we'll just put it in make sure our blower motor works Can you hear that all right make sure we got different speeds so we know that our transistor and our controls are working yep everything looks like it's working good confirm fix well there you go that's how I install a blower motor on a Honda Accord it's a good DIY project save yourself a bunch of money especially if you go with good quality aftermarket parts um, after looking at it again I could have just got those uh, bolts or uh, sorry screws from the blower motor I could have got them with a standard length screwdriver I didn't need to use the short one a lot of Hondas that back screw you do have to use a short one and that's what I'm used to so just as an FYI, but hey, as always, if the video helped you out or you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.